Now we are going to learn about a few small settings related to security. Maybe they are used not so frequently, but you definitely need to know about them. We have already mentioned about the secure admin session. This feature allows you to ensure the secure access to the administration console and skip continuous authentication in the system upon each attempt to configure Confluence. To configure this option, we select Security Configuration on the navigational sidebar. Here you can either disable secure admin sessions, which we do not recommend doing, or change the timeout value. By default, the secure session timeout is set to 10 minutes. You can adjust this timeout to find your own balance between security and convenience. The less this timeout is, the more often you need to log into the admin console. The higher it is, the lower is your system secureness, because the admin session lasts longer. A timeout of 10 minutes means that if you do not use the administrative console functions for more than 10 minutes, the next time you access the admin panel, you will be prompted to enter your password to authenticate. But if you return there, for example, after 7 minutes, you will not have to enter the password and the countdown of a new 10 minute timeout will begin. The only moment when we recommend disabling the secure admin session is a test confluence instance where you run a series of tests or debug new versions of apps. But you need to ensure that such system has nothing to do with the production system. It doesn't have a copy of the entire production system content and uses a different set of users' credentials. Here, on the security configuration page, you can also configure capture. This function is used to protect your instance against bots and hackers who may try to brute force you their passwords. It's important to leave this setting enabled for Confluence instances accessible from the Internet. We can define the number of failed login attempts when a capture will be displayed. By default, it's shown after three unsuccessful login attempts, and this is how it looks from the user's side. So, here we go. This is our first attempt to login. Our second unsuccessful attempt. And our third unsuccessful attempt. Here we can see our capture. So, as you can see, we definitely need to enter suggested symbols. The admin console also allows you to see the count of failed login attempts for each user. The total number of failed login attempts can be used to identify users whose passwords were brute forced by hackers or users with really bad memory. The current number of failed login attempts is used to determine when the user will be prompted to enter capture. The administrator can reset this counter. So, the user who has exceeded the number of allowed attempts will not see our capture. But if he or she exceeds the defined number of failed login attempts again, the capture will return. The user directory is a user account storage. Confluence Server supports several types of user directories. By default, the internal directory is used. In fact, all the management of groups and users from the previous lesson occurred within the internal directory. The internal directory is stored in the native Confluence server database. The internal directory is usually used in small instances of Confluence and if you don't have other Atlassian applications. In this case, you don't have to set up and administer another separate directory. But sooner or later, you might need to run an external directory for your company. The first variant is to use Jira external directory. This option is useful if you already use Jira and decide to set up Confluence. Or, for example, you have both Confluence and Jira and you are bored of administering the same users into different systems. In the future, you will be able to connect Bitbucket and Bamboo to Jira. But if you have a lot of Atlassian applications, then you should consider using Crowd, the user directory from Atlassian. The second variant is to use LDAP external directory. Lightweight directory access protocol LDAP 
is a software protocol for enabling anyone to locate organizations, individuals and other resources such as files and devices in a network. The network we are talking about may be public, we mean internet or corporate. LDAP has been endorsed by at least 40 software companies. For example, Microsoft includes it as a part of an active directory in a number of its products. So if you have already configured LDAP directory, you can use it. You should only take into consideration that with a large number of users, thousands and tens of thousands, you may encounter performance issues because all operations on user accounts may work slowly. You need to configure the connection to the directory carefully, because not all the users from the directory should have access to Confluence, otherwise you have a chance to exceed the limit of your Confluence license. The third option we mentioned earlier is to use Atlassian Crowd. Crowd is especially useful if you have several Atlassian applications and several external directories – LDAP, Microsoft Active Directory. In this case, Crowd manages all connection settings and lists of users and groups. But, of course, you need to buy a license for Crowd and learn how to administer it. In addition to a common set of users in different Atlassian applications, or slightly different if you want, Crowd supports single sign-on. With this feature, users can log into only one of the Atlassian applications, and they will be automatically logged into the rest. Let's see how to configure external directories and confluence. We'll use Crowd as an example and briefly describe how to configure Crowd itself to work with confluence. So we can see a list of directories and there is only one internal directory. Let's add one more directory and see how this happens, what features are opened after that. Now let's consider some additional settings. You can connect Crowd in two modes – Read Only or Read and Write. If the first variant allows Confluence only to retrieve a list of groups and users from Crowd, then the second one provides the ability to edit these users via Confluence and all the changes will be replicated back to Crowd. The only thing you can change in Confluence is a username. But if you decide to connect a different directory, LDAP or Atlassian Jira, then all the users and groups will be read only. So let's choose read and write for our example. The next interesting setting is nested groups. Why do we sometimes need them? Imagine that you have an R&D department with two teams, robotics and artificial intelligence. Each team has its specific permissions for its own space and also the shared permissions to access the common areas of the entire department which this team belongs to. The standard solution to this problem is the following. Create groups R&D, Robotics, Artificial Intelligence. Add all your employees to the R&D group. Sort your employees by their team membership and manually add them to the Robotics or Artificial Intelligence groups. Such option is OK, but you need to synchronize the R&D group and the individual project groups constantly, so that each employee gets into at least two groups. As we have mentioned before, it's done manually by the administrator and can lead to different mistakes due to human factor. To simplify this process, we can use nested groups. We specify our project groups Robotics and Artificial Intelligence as nested in the group R&D. After that, all members of the project groups will be automatically considered as R&D members. The corresponding permissions will be also given automatically. The nested groups feature should be enabled in Crowd itself in the corresponding directory. Sometimes, users with the same name can appear in several directories. External or internal, it doesn't matter. And there is nothing wrong, but you should always remember that the order of your directories is very important. User passwords are taken from the very first directory. And, for example, after changing directory order, it can happen that your users won't be able to log in with their current password. 
Let's see how to change directory order in Confluence. With groups, it works a little differently. If a particular user belongs to several directories where he or she is included into one or more groups, then Confluence aggregates permissions of all these groups to give proper permissions. Such strategy first appeared in version 5.7. In all the versions, groups were taken from the first directory where our user was found. But in general, avoid creation of the same users in different directories. And be careful with the limits of your Confluence license when you connect the external directory directly or through crowd. It may turn out that all the users within your organization will be considered as Confluence licensed users, even those who don't need Confluence. So it's always necessary to think over the list of groups that are allowed to log into Confluence. As we have mentioned before, when you have several Atlassian applications, it's time to switch from your Confluence internal directory to Crowd. Such migration is rather simple, and you can find everything in the documentation. Now let's talk about some useful tips for directory management. Well, you have successfully imported users into Crowd. We advise you to test your system and change the order of the directories for the beginning. In this case, you can quickly roll back to the internal directory if something goes wrong with Crowd. Before changing the order of the directories, we advise you to create one more system administrator in the Confluence internal directory. But this administrator shouldn't be in the Crowd directory. In case of intermittent connection to Crowd, your users won't be able to log into the system. We know that the same users are duplicated in the Confluence internal directory. But Confluence will try to authenticate these users referring to the first crowd directory. If you have your special system administrator, the authentication for this particular user will succeed and you will be able to fix the crowd connection settings or switch to the Confluence internal directory. When you are sure that everything works just fine, you have several options. The first one is to leave everything as it is. But with this trivial option, you always need to check that the user who you need to remove has been deleted from all directories. For example, you have deleted a user in Confluence or in Crowd. Then you find out that this user is still in the system and can use Confluence easily. The explanation is very simple. When you delete a user, he or she is deleted only from the first directory. In the second directory, this user remains. There is also some risk to exceed the limit of your Confluence license. If you change somebody's username in Crowd, Confluence will decide that there are two different users. The first one is renamed and taken from the Crowd directory. The second is the same user with the unchanged name from the internal directory. But Confluence will take them into account separately. Therefore, it's better to disable the internal directory completely. And this is our second option. But the main thing is to make sure that all your users have been already copied to Crowd, especially you as a system administrator. The third and the best option is to leave the internal directory enabled, but with the one and only user, our special system administrator, which we have recently mentioned. But it will be quite difficult to remove other users from the internal directory if your version of Confluence is outdated. The ability to delete users that have created content appeared only in Confluence 6.13. We told you about this in the previous lesson. The situation is further complicated by the fact that you can work with internal directory only when it is the first on the list. Nevertheless, there are several options. If you have a few users, you can choose a period when no one uses Confluence. Set the Confluence internal directory first on the list, manually disable all users except for our special system administrator. We recommend you to log in for this special admin. After that, you can easily return the crowd directory to its place. If you have a lot of users, 
You can deactivate them directly by making changes to the database and there is no need to change the order of the directories. But we won't talk about this in this course because it's pretty dangerous. Nevertheless, don't forget to make a backup of your database before the changes and restart Confluence after, so that they can be applied. And one more important point. If you want to enable single sign-on feature, note that it works with one directory, which must be crowd. In this case, you won't be able to use the special system administrator from the Confluence internal directory. So, we have successfully learned how the work with directories looks from the side of Confluence. Now let's see what happens in Crowd. Although this course is not about Crowd, we'll cover the most important Crowd configuration settings, which are enough to connect Confluence to Crowd. For deeper configuration, you need to consult the Atlas and documentation. Let's see what you need to configure in Crowd to connect it to Confluence. First, we will create a new directory. In many cases, you will have only one internal directory, in which users of all your Atlas and applications will be stored. Pay attention to the terminology. Now, internal means the internal directory for Crowd. It's stored in Crowd. But for Confluence, the same directory will be external. Let's check some other useful settings. The first field is required. We need to define a name for our directory. The password regex option allows you to use a regular expression to check the complexity of passwords. Such expressions can be quite complex, so it's better to search some variants on the internet than to invent them yourself. For example, this combination checks that the password is not shorter than 6 characters, contains lowercase and uppercase letters, numbers and special characters. But if you don't want to check anything, then just leave password regex field blank. The password encryption option defines the algorithm that is used to store password hashes. If you plan to export your users from the existing Confluence, then you need to select at less than security. After that, we need to add an application that we will connect to Crowd. Here we specify the type, name, password of our application and go further. Now we need to specify the application URL and the IP address from which requests will come. If your company uses a proxy server, the IP address under which you see the Confluence server and from which Confluence will make requests to Crowd may be different. Maybe you'll need some assistance from your network administrator. In the future, you can specify several IP addresses. Let's select the directories that will work with this application. The next step allows us to specify which groups inside our directories, if we have created such groups of course, have the permission to log into this application. The setting will be useful if not every user is allowed to log into all of your Atlas and applications. Or we can simply indicate that everyone in the directory has such permission. Once you have created the directory, you can create new users manually. Or you can import them. 
You can import from several different sources, but we'll try to import from the existing confluence. Here we need to choose which product and which directory we are importing. Because we import from Confluence and we have the Atlas and Security option for storing passwords, we can select the Import Passwords option. Next, we configure the connection parameters to the database. We can get Product Database URL from our Confluence System Information Database Connection URL. And now everything is ready. At the end of our lesson, let's sum up the following facts. You need to define the timeout of the secure admin session and the number of failed login attempts when a capture will be displayed to find balance between convenience and secureness. Confluence Server supports two types of user directories, internal and external. There are three types of Confluence Server external user directories. Jira external directory, LDAP external directory, and Crowd external directory. Crowd is strongly recommended if you have several Atlassian applications and external directories. The nested groups feature helps us to assign the corresponding permissions shared by different groups automatically. The order of your user directories is very important. The best option of the user directory management is to leave the internal directory enabled but with the one and only user, a special system administrator.